Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and in this video we're going to finish up our discussion on the Law of Sines. So in the previous video we talked about how to use the Law of Sines to solve oblique triangles and also to solve applied problems using the Law of Sines. In this video we're going to talk about the ambiguous case for the Law of Sines. So let's talk about the ambiguous case. In the examples we showed in the previous video, a unique oblique triangle was determined by the information that was given. This will always be the case if you have case 1 that involves an ASA triangle, which is an angle-side-angle triangle, or an SAA triangle, which is side-angle-angle triangle. However, in case 2, where you have side-side-angle or an SSA triangle, there may be two triangles, one triangle, or even no triangle that can be formed with the given properties. For this reason, case 2 is sometimes called the ambiguous case. So to see why this is the case, the following figure shows the possibilities when angle A and sides A and B are given. No solution is possible in the figure that's on the far left since the side A is too short to complete the triangle. So in this case you have angle A and you have the side A and side B that are given. However, in this case, the length of side A is too short to actually complete the triangle. And so in this case, you have the ambiguous case where you have no solution. There is no triangle that can be formed with the given information. The second from the left gives a solution that is a right triangle. And so in this case, you have an angle A and you have sides A and side B. In this case, this side A actually meets the other side at a right angle. And so you have one solution, which is a right triangle, can be formed. So notice in the third figure, there are actually two possible solutions for the side A. So you have angle A, side B. Well, if you have this length A, you actually have this point B, and that forms an oblique triangle. However, you also have another solution for side A's length, which means you have a second oblique triangle that can be formed. The figure that's on the far right is actually a unique triangle with the given properties. So only one triangle can be formed with this angle A and side A and side B as given. So when you're using the law of sines with case two, keep in mind that you could have three different possibilities. No solution because no triangle can be formed. One solution which actually gives you a right triangle or one solution that's an oblique triangle or you could potentially have two different solutions. Two different oblique triangles could be formed. So let's take a look at example three, the one solution case for an SSA triangle or a side-side angle triangle. Solve the following oblique triangle by finding the lengths of the missing sides and the missing angles. Round your answers to two decimal places. So in this case, we're given the triangle where angle A is 45 degrees, and we have the length B is seven, and the length A will be seven times square root two. So again, make sure that you have your triangle labeled as side A is across from angle A, side B is across from angle B, and side C is across from angle C. To solve this oblique triangle, we need to find the lengths of all three sides and the measure of all three angles. So notice in this triangle, you have an SSA triangle, a side-side angle triangle. You have two sides and one angle. And so this is what's called an oblique triangle because there's no right angle in the triangle. So let's use the law of sines to actually find out what is the measure of angle B. Because we have the side B's length and we have angle A and the length of side A given to us in the problem. So sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to sine of angle B divided by the length of side B. Because A is 45 degrees, you'll have sine of 45 degrees divided by A. Well, A was given as 7 times square root 2 and it equals sine of B. Well, we don't know what angle B is, so we'll keep it as sine of B and divide by B, which is length 7. So you have these two fractions are equal to each other in this proportion. You can cross multiply because the two fractions are equal. And so seven times sine of 45 degrees is equal to sine of B times seven times square root two. So we want to find out what is the measure of angle B. We need to isolate the sine of B on one side of the equation. So divide both sides of the equation by seven times square root two. So seven times sine of 45 degrees divided by seven square root two on one side of the equation is equal to sine of B. And now if we want to get the angle B, we need to undo the sine function. So to do that, we're going to take the inverse sine function on both sides of the equation. Inverse sine of the left side of the equation, inverse sine of sine of B, well, the inverse sine function and the sine function will cancel each other out or undo each other. And so that means you get angle B by itself and it equals, take the inverse sine on the right side of the equation, you have inverse sine of seven times sine of 45 degrees divided by seven times square root two in the denominator. So to find out the angle B, we're going to use inverse sine, so second sine of seven times sine of 45 degrees in the numerator divided by, and now make sure the denominator is in parentheses, seven times square root two and then close parenthesis on the denominator, close parenthesis on the inverse sine function. And so make sure you're in degree mode because we want to find out what is the angle B in degrees. And so the answer is 30 degrees. So angle B is a 30 degree angle. And so now that we have two angles, we actually can find out the remaining angle, angle C. So angle A was 45 degrees, angle B was 30 degrees, and now that means measure of angle C is 180 degrees because the triangle's three angles must add up to 180 degrees. Subtract 45 degrees, subtract 30 degrees, 
and that must equal 105 degrees. So angle C is a 105 degree angle. And so now that we have angle C, we actually can find out the length of side C using the law of sines. So sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. And so again, you have sine of A, that's sine of 45 degrees, divided by the length of side A, that is seven times square root two, is equal to sine of C, well we just found out C is a 105 degree angle, so sine of 105 degrees, divided by the length of side C, which we don't know yet. So we know three of the four pieces of this proportion, we can use cross multiply because these two fractions are equal to one another to find out what is the length of side C. So C times sine of 45 degrees is equal to seven times square root two times sine of 105 degrees. And so if you divide both sides of the equation by sine of 45 degrees, you can isolate C on one side of the equation. So C is seven times square root two in the numerator times sine of 105 degrees and then divide by sine of 45 degrees. And so this will be seven times square root two times sine of 105 degrees divided by sine of 45 degrees, and that's approximately 13.529, or if you round the two decimal places, 13.53, and that's the length of side C in our triangle. So we found out the length of all three sides. We were given the length of side A was seven times root two, the length of side B was seven, and now we know what the length of side C is. It's 13.53. We also were given the angle 45 degrees, and we found out angle B using the law of sines was 30 degrees, and we also found out that angle C was 105 degrees, using the fact that the sum of all three angles in a triangle must equal 180 degrees. So this was the one solution case for the side-side angle triangle. We only had one potential triangle that could be formed. In example four, we're going to find out that there are two different possibilities for an oblique triangle that can be formed. So example four, the two solution case for an SSA triangle or a side-side angle triangle, solve the following oblique triangle by finding links of the missing sides and the missing angles, round your answers to two decimal places. And the only information that we're given is angle A is a 43.1 degree angle, side A is 186.2, and length of side B is 248.6. We'll notice that we have two sides, the length of side A and the length of side B, and we also have one angle, so that's a side-side angle triangle. We need to use a law of sines to solve the oblique triangle. So we have angle A and we have side A, and we only have side B. We need to find out what is the measure of angle B. So let's use the law of sines. Sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to sine of angle B divided by the length of side B. So we know three of the four different parts of this proportion. We know angle A is 43.1 degrees, we know the side A was 186.2, and we know the length of side B was 248.6. So we can find out what is sine of B, and then that will help us find out what is angle B. So sine of 43.1 degrees divided by 186.2 is equal to sine of B divided by 248.6. And so again, we have a proportion, we have two fractions equal to one another, cross multiply, and those cross products should be equal. So 186.2 times sine of B is equal to 248.6 times sine of 43.1 degree. And so if you want to get sine of B by itself, so we can find out the angle B's measure, divide both sides of the equation by 186.2. And so sine of B on one side of the equation gives you 248.6 times sine of 43.1 degrees divided by 186.2. And so again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, which will give us 248.6 times sine of 43.1 degrees divided by 186.2, and that's approximately 0.912, or if you round the two decimal places, 0.91. However, notice that you have sine of B is equal to 0.912. There are two different possibilities for the angle B where sine of B is 0.912 because angle B could actually be in quadrants one or two because the sine function is a positive value. That only occurs in quadrants one and two. And so let's find out what is the angle B in quadrant one using the inverse sine function. So you have sine of B is equal to 0.912. If you want to cancel out the sine function so you can just get the angle B by itself, use the inverse sine function, inverse sine of sine of B, the inverse sine function and the sine function will undo each other and you'll just get the angle B by itself, but then you also need to take the inverse sine function on the right side of the equation. So inverse sine of 248.6 times sine of 43.1 degrees and then divide by 186.2. That's the entire argument of the inverse sine function because you want to take the inverse sine function on the entire right side of the equation. And so we want to calculate inverse sine, so second sine function, 248, 0.6 times sine of 43.1 degrees, close parenthesis on the sine function, and then divide by 186.2, and then close parenthesis on the inverse sine function, and that's going to give you an answer that's approximately 65.819, or if you round the two decimal places, 65.819.
65.82 degrees. So that would be the answer for the angle B if you're talking about quadrant one, because the inverse sine function only exists if the sine function is restricted to quadrants one or four, where you have the angle between negative pi over two radians and pi over two radians, or negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. So this angle, 65.82 degrees, is actually a quadrant one angle. Well, you could also have the angle B be in quadrant two because the sine function is also positive in quadrant two. So that angle would be 180 degrees, subtract a triangle in quadrant two, so subtract 65.819 degrees from 180 degrees, and that gives you 114.181 degrees. So this is another possibility for the angle B that actually is in quadrant two. That would form a triangle that has a 65.819 degree angle in quadrant two. So there are two different possibilities. You can have an angle B that's in quadrant one, that's 65.819 degrees, or you can have an angle B that's in quadrant two, and that gives you 114.181 degrees. So there's gonna be two different solutions this time because there are two different possibilities for the angle B, where the sine of B was 0.912. So the first solution is where you have the angle B is a 65.819 degree angle. So that means the remaining angle, measure of angle C is 180 degrees, subtract 43.1, that was the measure of angle A, then subtract the measure of angle B, which is 65.819 degrees. So angle C is a 71.081 degree angle. So we found out all three angles in this triangle that's in solution one. Now we need to find out what is the length of side C. We can find out the length of side C using the law of sines. So sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. So that would give us sine of 43.1 degrees because angle A was 43.1 degrees divided by A, which was 186.2 is equal to sine of C, that would be sine of 71.081 degrees, divided by lowercase c, that's the length of side C. So we have this proportion from the law of sines. You can cross multiply and those cross products should be equal. So C times sine of 43.1 degrees is equal to 186.2 times sine of 71.081 degrees. And so we wanna find out what is the length of side C. You can divide both sides of the equation by sine of 43.1 degrees and you can get C by itself. So C is 186.2, times sine of 71.081 degrees, and then divide by sine of 43.1 degrees. And this will give us 186.2 times sine of 71.081 degrees, close parenthesis on the sine function, then divide by sine of 43.1 degrees, which is approximately 257.7899, or if you're around the two decimal places, 257.79. That's the length of side C, for the triangle that's in this first solution. You have angle B of 65.819 degrees. That means side C must be 257.79. So that solves the first triangle. You have angle A is 43.1 degrees. You have side A is 186.2. You have angle B is 65.819 degrees. We have side B was 248.6. Angle C is 71.081 degrees. And the length of side C is 257.79. However, there was another potential oblique triangle, and that was using the other value for angle B that actually occurred in quadrant two. So angle B could also be 114.181 degrees if you have the angle B formed in quadrant two. And so that means the measure of angle C would be 180 degrees, subtract measure of angle A, 43.1 degrees, subtract the measure of angle B, which in this case would be 114.181 degrees, that gives you angle C is 22.719 degree angle. And now again, we have angle C, now we can find out the length of side C using the law of sines. Sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to the sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. And so that means sine of 43.1 degrees divided by 186.2 is equal to sine of 22.719 degrees for the angle C divided by length of side C, which we don't know yet. But we know three of the four that's in this proportion. And so you can use cross multiply because these two fractions are equal to one another. So C times sine of 43.1 degrees is equal to 186.2 times sine of 22.719 degrees. And so C times sine of 43.1 degrees, if you want to get C by itself, divide both sides of the equation by sine of 43.1 degrees. So C will be 186.2 times sine of 22.719 degree angle divided by sine of 43.1 degree angle. So that tells us the length of side C would be 186.2 times sine of 22.719 degrees, close parenthesis on the sine function, then divide by sine of 43.1 degrees, that's approximately 105.247, or if you're around the two decimal places, 105.25 for the length of side C in this second solution. So the second solution for this oblique triangle would be angle A is 43.1 degrees, angle B is 114.181 degrees, 
Angle C would be 22.719 degrees in this triangle. Length of side A was 186.2. Length of side B was 248.6. And now we found out the length of side C could also be 105.247. There are two different solutions because there are two different possibilities for the sine of 0 0.912. You could have a triangle that's formed in quadrant 1 or a triangle that could be formed in quadrant 2 because the sine function is positive in quadrants 1 or 2. So as we saw in the previous example, there are two different possibilities for the angle B. In general, if you have sine of an angle that's less than 1, you need to check that the angle and its supplement are actually possibilities because an angle that's less than 180 degrees can be an oblique triangle. So as we just saw in the previous example, there were two different solutions. There were two different oblique triangles that could be formed because we had two different values for the measure of angle B. So to decide whether either possibility works, we need to check whether the resulting sum of the angles actually exceeds 180 degrees. It can happen that both possibilities are compatible. As we saw in the previous example, we had two solutions with the given information. However, there are some cases where you have no solution or no triangle can be formed from the given information, as we're going to see in the next example. So example five, the no solution case for the SSA triangle or a side-side angle triangle. Solve the following oblique triangle by finding the lengths of the missing sides and the missing angles. Round your answers to two decimal places. So the triangle that we're given has angle A is 42 degree angle, and we have the side A has a length of 70, and the length of side B is 122. So to solve this oblique triangle, we need to find the lengths of all three sides and the measure of all three angles. So let's use the law of sine so we can find out what is the measure of angle B. So sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to sine of angle B divided by the length of side B. So that gives us sine of 42 degrees divided by the length of the side that's opposite the 42 degree angle. That's side A, so that's 70, is equal to sine of angle B divided by the length of the side that's opposite angle B, that's lowercase b, 122. And so since we know three of the four different components of this proportion, we can find out what is the measure of angle B by isolating the sine of B on one side of the equation and using the inverse sine function. So cross multiply, 122 times sine of 42 degrees is equal to 70 times sine of B. And so if you want to get sine of B by itself on one side of the equation, divide both sides of the equation by 70. So 122 times sine of 42 degrees divided by 70 is equal to sine of B. And so if you want to get B by itself, you need to undo the sine function. So you need to take the inverse sine function on both sides of the equation. Inverse sine of sine of B will just give you B because the inverse sine and the sine function are inverses of each other. And so you take the inverse sine on the right side of the equation, inverse sine of 122 times sine of 42 degrees divided by 70. Well, that would give us second sine button to get the inverse sine function, 122 times sine of 42 degrees divided by 70 close parenthesis on the inverse sine function, and you get a domain error. Keep in mind that the sine function's range is the domain of the inverse sine function. The sine function has a range between negative 1 and 1. Well, that means that the domain of the inverse sine function is also from negative 1 to 1, including the endpoints. Since our argument of the inverse sine function is greater than 1, there is no value for the inverse sine of 1.166, which is the approximate value for what's inside the inverse sine function. This means that there is no possible value for the measure of angle B that has the given information side B is 122, side A is 70, and angle A is 42 degrees. There is no solution in this case. There is no oblique triangle that can be formed. And this is because the sine of an angle can never be greater than 1. That means that there is no triangle that can satisfy the given conditions of the problem. So there is no solution in this case. So this finishes our video on the ambiguous case for the law of sines. We talked about how to use the law of sines to solve oblique triangles. We talked about how to solve applied problems using the law of sines. We also talked about the ambiguous case for the law of sines. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework with this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about the law of cosines.